There we go. <laughs> I love it's that we both time. give thumbs up. I love how it says that. It's showtime. <laughs> Here we are. Exponential joy. Recover your yeah. joy. What matters most. And what matters most to me is good friends. And I have two of my greatest, most bestest, most wonderful friends here with me as I'm not home. I'm here in Kelowna with my grandchildren. Big sigh. <laughs> you know, when, when you're going to go through a full moon ascension elevational thing, just go visit your grandkids for a couple days. See what happens. See what happens. It's there's incredible. A, there, there's a huge reality check. Here's my grounding, and they can see all of it. That's the fun part. They're like, yeah, sure. You know, what what do your grandkids call you? Nona. Nona. I'm an Oma. So. I could have been an Oma, but the other mother is an Oma, so Nona. And Nona, Nance, kind of has a nice ring. Yes. I, I, I like I like the Nona Nance. I like yeah. that too. It's super fun. Yeah. It's super I, I, I was only because nobody was fighting for it. They had nanas, they had Gigi's, they had grandmas. And I'm like, I'll be Oma. Nobody was fighting for that one. So like, and I had an Oma growing up because my father was from the Netherlands. So. Mm -hmm. And I had an Oma growing up because my grandparents were from Germany, Poland, Russia, mm -hmm. that whole infrastructure of what happened after the war. Yeah. That's exactly why my father ended up in the States because mm -hmm. he was there when um, the Netherlands was occupied by Germany and just, he never, he was a teenager. He had to hide out. Very interesting story. He had to hide out and got smuggled to a farm to work um, because they were taking boys, young men, his age to go work in the factories because of the bombing that was going on in Germany. Mm -hmm. And so, but they wouldn't take farm hands because the last winter they were there and it was Canada. Thank you, Canada that um, liberated the Netherlands, C Canada and the, and the Netherlands have a very close relationship. Do you know that in the country of Canada, the only other country that exists within your walls is the Netherlands. There is one hospital room in Ottawa that is still considered the property of the Netherlands because they, smuggled the queen out who was pregnant and in order for the for who is now queen nor to be born um they had to be born within a territory so the canadian government gave this room and it is still to this day because the lineage exists still property of the um did i just teach you about your country wow. by the way wow mm -hmm. Knowing, oh, Daph's muted. You're muted. <laughs> I was going to say, knowing, because, I mean, you're in BC, I'm in Alberta, and Kitty, where are you right now? Uh, right now I'm in Detroit. Right? So, I mean, that's what's so wonderful about this sort of platform is we can all be here at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I am floored by that information. That's like, thank you so much for giving me that. Because that's the history mm -hmm. that they don't teach us. Well, and thank you, Canada. Canada liberated the Netherlands. Canada is why I'm sitting here in Detroit, really. Um, and But that was an amazing story about how the Canadian government stepped forward and said, we are giving you this. It is now considered the Netherlands. And so she could give birth. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You know, when I think back to my time of birthing, um, and we are here in this energy where we have the opportunity to birth and build a lot. Mm -hmm. Because I know from what I've been learning in astrology is that we have a mass amount of expansive energy. And this morning when you were talking on your live, you said something and I had to listen to it over and over and over it. And I'm still not sure I understand. So is so, that my question right there? That's your question. Yeah. What does expanding in stabilization mean? So this is how I tell this story. Because, of course, on a reel, you get 90 seconds. 
Um, so there's only so fast you can talk. Um, and my dear friends here might be able to, to hear me, but a lot of people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So when we talk about Jupiter, Jupiter is that Jupiter is for everyone was a, available to be seen underneath the uh, moon last night, this full moon in Taurus. And Jupiter itself is in the sign of Taurus at the moment. Uh, Jupiter is the ruler, though, of Sagittarius and expansion and higher learning. So what does expanding and stabilizing mean? In other words, as we are expanding as human beings, expanding our energy, we're expanding it so we can stabilize this human need to ride a roller coaster um, and go after each other and endless cycles of war and peace and war and peace so we can stabilize human beings to be able to expand and accept one another. And that will stabilize the human race. Otherwise, if we look at the human race, we destroy things, we destroy each other. We need to stabilize. And it's not stabilized like kind of historically what has happened, this very um, not divine masculine energy that is the power over. It's very much this rise of the feminine energy of how do we stabilize together? How do we expand to accept all of us? And that will bring us stabilization. There's no question, especially looking at the events of this, just this last week, that there's mm -hmm. this tug going on in this expansion and there's a panic. I mean, without, I'm not being political, but with that's part of what's going on in Israel. That's part of what's going on with mass shootings. You know, personally this week, it got really close to home um, for me. And, um, and in, because our planet is going to stabilize with us on it or not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, this is what this expanding and stabilization means, expanding what we know so we can ground ourselves and be here and be in this energy of what we're evolving. Does that help? Well, it sure lines up with our conversation for tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it, it truly, truly does. Next question: How can how how can self care help this process? That's what we're talking about: is filling yeah. our cup. Yeah, so. and if we can hold our space in a very stabilized understanding of who we are, and in order to do that, we have to expand. I don't know about you, but in my 60, soon to be 63 years, um, is I have evolved in how I keep myself grounded and myself centered and myself able to hold that space. Mm -hmm. And I only can do that when I take care of myself and acknowledge who I am. And when I really acknowledge who I am, I don't need to fight with you about me. <laughs> You know, I, I don't, I, it's, I, you know, uh, you've heard me say this, Nancy, a few times in class, my own life is barely my business, let alone anybody else's life. You know? Yeah. And that uh, is so true. And, you know, I think that's funny because so often we have this expectation of how people should care for us when we are in those difficult times, when we're not feeling our best, when we've got a cold, when, when we've just come into a traumatic, unexpected situation in our lives. We want someone often to care for us. Once we enter that transformative time in life, whatever age that is, doesn't have to be 60, 50, 40, 30. It could be in your 20s when you begin transforming into a better version of you. When you're like, okay, I know what I need and I'm going to do my best to give that to me. And then if I need help, I'm not that, that broken record of poor me. I'm actually asking for help because I really need help. So it's not being needy so much. Right. And, and there's a fine line of accepting the help the way people can give it and the way you need it. And part of what 
I think that expansion that we were just talking about and stability is finding the people to surround yourself with that help you hold your space, not mm-hmm. challenge it, not tell you how to live, but are, are saying, hey, you know, I'm here for you. I see you. And um, that's really, really important. And we don't really always communicate that because we don't see ourselves. That's where self-care comes in. Um, and to take care of self is not selfish. It's to really learn about what my needs are. And then I don't have to tell you, you're not giving me enough. You know, I'm going to find the people that understand that with me. And then I can look at them and say, my favorite expression, I say now all the time, you do you. I can truly mean it. You do you. You know, it doesn't mean I'm going to hang around and try to fix you or tell you how to live your life. And a lot of the world's issues are around, you know, control and other people telling each other how to live. Mm, yeah. So, and yeah, and that's not. And I mean, you talking about the global. Take that's a that's a macrocosm. Mm-hmm. Take that down to the microcosm, in our own homes, mm-hmm. in our own relationships. You know, it, it's that when when you're not feeling well, you should have something to eat. There we go again with that word, should, not right. hungry. I'm not hungry. Yeah, but you should have something. It'll make you feel better. I'm not hungry. Thou shall not should on thyself. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? It, it's, it's so, so true. And if we can honor that within ourselves, sovereignly, myself, what do I want, learning to listen to that inner guidance, then we can get better and better and better at it, the more that we learn Mm -hmm. to feel our feelings. And then we can become more proactive in self-care. Well, and we we are not our feelings, we are not our thoughts, but that's why we need to feel them because they're guidelines. But doesn't mean I have to assign it a pattern to solve. Sometimes I just need to feel it. And mm-hmm. yeah, and um, I mean, that's where the stars are right now. This this lunar eclipse was in Taurus. Taurus is your home, your body. It's what you value. It is ruled by Venus. And Venus right now is in a placement called Virgo, which is all those mm-hmm. little parts. And, it, um, and it's a hard placement for Venus because Venus wants to be in that flow and what I value and that balance. And in Virgo, it's constantly looking for the smaller pieces creatively in relationship. And so everything you just said is exactly where we are. We're trying to figure out these bigger, these pieces so we can stabilize as we expand versus this crash and burn, or I'm going after you or you're wrong. And it's like, wow, you know, um, it is, such an interesting time in this lunar eclipse. So, you know, here's Taurus moon, this moon of what do I value? It's the second house. It's, you know, my abundance, my body, all of those things. And here's Jupiter underneath going, okay, now that you get it, expand, expand that, stabilize all of us, hold this spot as a collective. And here's Venus in there going, here's the little pieces you might have to move for you. So very much what's what's going on. Makes in my mind's eye, what I'm seeing is very much that nuclear fusion. Is it fusion? Whereby you need to get that stable point. So that the energy, it, it's vibrating at a very, 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 very high rate. And it needs to stabilize. You saw that very much in the, um, like the Star Wars Captain, Captain, she's going to blow. <laughs> I can't remember who that character was. Um, like I can, I, I wasn't a huge Star Wars um, theologist, so to say. I didn't know all the names of the characters, but that's what would happen if things didn't go right. Mm-hmm. But yet, the Star Trek 
It was always fine. The spaceship never, did they ever blow up? Mm -mm. No, and their prime directive was exactly what we're talking about. Do not interfere. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Your job is not to interfere. Your job is to hold Be. the Federation, hold the space for those that wish, you know. And um, uh, that's an interesting question. What house would you consider the house of self-care? Well, some of it would be second house because it's value. How do I value myself? And, and it's about my home, my body, it's earth, it's Taurus. I would also, there's the fifth house, which is the house of self and creativeness. So that is another point of self-care. And those are both in the quadrant that's about inner work. Um, and then the important house, one of the most important houses, especially in my chart, is the sixth house, which is the house of the systems I participate in and service. What do I participate in? Where do I put my body for self-care? You know, there's the eighth house of transformation. You know, if, the, if I'm in my own way, I have to change. And then I actually think the 12th house, and that's the house of the unconscious to the conscious. And mm -hmm. in some ways, to me, that is the ultimate self-care. What becomes uncovered is what I must deal with. And that's the house where spirit lives and the house of flow. Um, so it's 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 very interesting question. It kind of depends where you are and what where your conversations are taking place. Like I've read charts where it's so, so certain people, it's so important that they surround themselves with people that help them. Um, I read charts where self-care more is about slowing the Christ down, <laughs> excuse yeah. me, you know, and paying attention. It's not about the people around them, but it's about slowing down mm -hmm. enough to look at it. Um, I've also read charts where, there's so much healing energetically that people are working at that that becomes their job, their focus. It's not about in lifetime, I got to take care of everybody else. I'm really here to learn that art. So um, those are going to be different houses and how they show up. That's a beautiful answer. Like it truly is mm -hmm. because when you were talking about creativity for self-care, mm -hmm. I know how often um, when Daphne and I are talking, you know, we do our gratitude list every single day. If we don't do it in writing, we're still chatting throughout the day. Oh my God, I'm so grateful this happened. It's just part of our verbiage. But Daphne, you go out to the farm quite often to your parents' home where yep. you create. So yes. is part of your self-care is creation? Yes. <laughs> There's um, a short answer. <laughs> I mean, there, like, like Kitty was saying, you know, each person is so different and what works for them is so different. Hence the you do you. But I mean, I'm blessed to have so many things and people in my life at, such as, you know, you Nancy, that helps me to remain here present and stay in gratitude. And these amazing tools that I have right here, that I use for myself for self care. Yeah. And uh, she shares so selflessly those tools. I, bless you, bless you, <laughs> bless you. Right? I know I am so blessed. Like right now, all of these frequencies that Daphne is running, that's mm -hmm. why so often when people watch what matters most, mm -hmm. they get a different feel than when they're watching Mental Health Warriors, which is another program that I'm on. It's an incredibly different feel. Mm -hmm. it, you got to, you got to, you got to try both to get that going. There's no way to explain it. Yeah. No. And there, there isn't because we have a different map. Each of us had a bargain we came in with. And so the house of self care, where you're going to have your conversation, mm -hmm. I, I didn't even say like the ninth house, the ninth house is, 
uh, truths and expanded learning. Maybe you you struck up a bargain to really expand your understanding and find truths. And you're a truth warrior where you're working with people to, to pull their own truth out. It, it really, self-care becomes about you know, um, how it sounds so funny to say this, how you really look at yourself and care for yourself, not just, oh, self-care is me doing my hair, whatever. It's how do I care for myself, where I bring myself the conversations I put, you know, myself in. And um, we all, you do you, we all have such different energies. Well, and Nancy, like you were saying, yes, I do go out to the farm a lot and spend a lot of time out there because it is so peaceful. The trees, the river, the, you know, the nature, just uh, to go outside and just sit and listen to the trees is for me. So healing. I know that for some people that would be like the worst thing ever, but for me, I love it. And that's when I do my best creating of my crystal pieces of jewelry, because that's when I'm in so inspired. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, um, a self-care thing I have be taking care of myself is I've turned, there's a television I'm pointing to. Um, I just don't watch it anymore. Now, sometimes I suck my little brain out on the YouTube shorts. I can deep dive down there sometimes. Um, it's interesting because at the moment I met my sisters and they watch a lot of television. And I realized even as we were sitting here talking, that is something I have done to take care of myself. I don't need that noise for me. And there are other people that do need it. I'm, I'm not criticizing them uh, at, at least, but for me, uh, it, it kept me distracted from what is the next best thing for me? What is my next best move for me? You know, where am I being called? I was going to say, Nancy, what is it that you like to do best for self-care? When it comes to self-care, for me, it changes. It changes rapidly. I've learned the importance of preventative self-care. So what I mean by preventative self-care is constantly scheduling self-care. I have, because of the injury that I've sustained on my right side with my tendonitis, I have chiropractor every second week. I have massage every other week. I have sound therapy. I have, I mean, I've got it scheduled. So I've got something every single week so that I'm constantly maintaining my engine at its optimal mm -hmm. If I don't, then the injury begins to flare up again. I need to keep it calm so that the healing can keep on continuing. So for me, preventative self-care is a, a, the utmost importance. And little things. I'm washing my face in the evening before bed. Mm -hmm. Five minutes. Wow. Big game changer for me. Big game changer. And it's in the little things, isn't it? It really, really is where we find taking care of self is well, in the moment. Something else that I've noticed for myself now that we're talking like this is about the little things. It's even just how things are said. Don't <laughs> fall down the stairs. Don't fall down the stairs. No, no, no don't, don't say that. Walk carefully. I'm glad to see you're walking carefully down the stairs. You know what I mean? Just, or, or or if it's not a big deal, no, you mean so it's going to be easy, right? It's just the way things are worded, you know, because like that thing we heard the other day, Nancy, the universe doesn't hear your what you don't want. When you say you don't want something, the universe hears what, thinks it's what you want. So that's what you get. Mm -hmm. 30 <laughs> days of telling the universe what you want and you've got 17 to 18 seconds to rewind. So when you say, I don't want any more tea, I would really like to have more coffee, please. Yep. Like when we went to drop you off at the airport, I mean, we could have had such a hassle, but it was the easiest experience I've ever had because we put it out there that it's going to be easy, and it was. 
to me, that mm-hmm. self care when that when we can do stuff like that and everything just rolls the way that you know we speak it to roll, that to me is my self care too. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> And it well, really and, was. It, it was a yeah. beautiful experience. The departures ramp at the Edmonton International Airport is temporarily down. And the only way to get your luggage to the departure is going through a very um, a much longer process. It's not intricate huge, system. But it, it, for me, because of my arm, I couldn't push two suitcases. I could only push one. And I had two suitcases. So I needed to find a place where we could park and Daphne could help me bring the suitcase in. And we just approached, excuse me, can you please help us find the place where we can go? My friend here is supporting me in getting my luggage to the departures. And it was, it took a little while to be able to explain that I was just <laughs> my support worker Daphne, and and on the side of her Jeep, it says, what does it say? It says Rehabilitation and Wellness Practitioner. Commercial vehicle. We could go to the commercial vehicle section, you know, because I just needed support. And it all worked out absolutely perfect. We ended up arriving. When I I checked in, it was 11-11. Of course it was. Of course it was. My favorite. The vehicle that we pulled up behind had license plate 0333. Yes. And we we're seeing numbers all the way there. So, well, it's so much fun. That's so important, too, to slow down long enough. There's a piece of that self care to yep. pay attention to what you've put out to the universe. You know, I've been teasing my sister because she was driving downtown Detroit and she really didn't want to drive downtown Detroit. And she kept saying, I hate, I just wish I didn't have to do that. Now, she did not mean to fall out her front step and break her ankle and have surgery and do all those things. But I looked right at her and says, be careful what you put to that universe. And she's like, no kidding. You know, um, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it is to slow down long enough to think about what we say, because that's that intentional living, that is self-care. It's, I guess that's what I would call self-care is mm-hmm. intentional living. Intentional living. I love that. Yeah. Intentional living is self-care. And it yes. truly is. That's why I get to the airport early. I don't have to be there as early as I need, as I choose to. It's one hour before departures that you can, you know, your, your bug, your baggage needs to be checked in. I get there two hours before. Why? Me too. I, I like having that little bit of extra time so I can have a bite to eat, coffee if it's breakfast time. I had crispy crispers and a beer. It was perfect. There's a combo. <laughs> crispy crispers and a beer. And it was so good. I finished every single drop. It was so good. Yeah, I, I would rather people watch and sit calmly at my gate yeah. and then to... You know, uh, the last time, um, not the very last time I flew, but the time before, I put it out to the universe because I had not flown in in a while. And I just said, all right, this is just going to go very smoothly. Uh Um, And my husband said, and I'm like, sure enough, I'm waiting in line. It's a fairly long line. And the woman behind me says, I think we can check outside. I'm like, well, let's go. So we went out. Again, intentional living. You know, um, how are we going to go through the TSA in the United States? You know, how, how is that going to go? Just keep putting it out there. And, you know, and and accepting part of self-care for me is when I get irritated to go, all right, let's look at this. <laughs> you know, and- how can I deal with this as a mature, well-balanced <laughs> human being right you and acknowledge feel the feelings yep this is just this uncomfortable like i'm not a uh, you know i prefer to move quickly through lines than to you know i'm thinking of my words daphne uh, um and so but i acknowledge that there is a hiccup and i'm going to learn from this hiccup and feel this feeling so we can move so it doesn't 
uh, for me, not letting things build yeah. and not assigning it to another pattern. Oops. There, you know, that's, that's another kind of self-care and knowing my limitations. If I go to a restaurant and they say it's a two and a half hour wait, that's not a restaurant for me. It's, it's not on anybody else. I, you know, when I'm ready to eat, I'm ready to eat. So like, thank you. I understand there are people who are fine waiting and that's not me. You know? Yeah, that's not me either. That's not me either. And I like how you said acknowledging your feelings mm -hmm. and then being able to articulate to other people what those feelings are. I know with my two granddaughters, I mean, we've got two and four. So they push the limits. They push and they push. And I said to my one granddaughter, I said, oh, no, sweetheart, you don't want to see Nona angry. You really don't want to see me angry because I will scare you. <laughs> I looked back, right? And I says, oh, no, Nona is not nice when she's angry. And I do. I, I, I acknowledge that within myself. I turn like the Hulk. Like I get all green and mean. I'm just like nasty. <laughs> you don't want to see that, sweetheart. Yeah, I, I get it. When you acknowledge it... Um, I read a book years ago, and I'm just understanding the depth of this particular part, but it always talked about, it was called The Right Use of Will. Hmm. And um, what it explained, which makes perfect sense, is when I deny anything, I give my power away. So if I deny I'm having these feelings and try to repress them, I've given my power away to deal with it. Hmm. And so if I don't acknowledge that I'm annoyed, we landed in Detroit and the, the pilot announced, we're waiting for a gate assignment. And right away I went into, well, that's dumb. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. We're just going to let that go, Kitty. Um, mm -hmm. And then we sat there and sat there and they came on a couple different times and said, well, the, there's a plane at our gate and we need to wait till they pull away. And, and I'm looking out the window and there's two open gates. I'm like, why can't we just go there? You're not in charge. <laughs> acknowledge that you are annoyed and not acknowledge that you just want to get off this plane. You had uh, to come to Detroit because it was kind of an emergency. The flight I could get was to go all the way to Orlando and then fly back to Detroit from Maine. You know, and so I had already, so, you know, but that was on me. So finally they come on and the pilot goes, good news. We're going to that gate we've been looking at for a half hour. <laughs> and he can't do anything about it either because right. he's got to wait for the gatekeeper. Right. And I had all kinds of, you know, and I said to the people out loud, I realize this is on me, but look at that gate open right there. And I put it out into the universe. See, you created the gate, man. And, and so, who know, is the saint? Who's the saint at the gates? The pearly gates? Um, is it Jermaine? Is it? No, no. Who takes Saint Peter? Saint Peter. Thank you. Saint yeah. Peter, right. And and that's what they were waiting for. They were waiting for Saint Pete to say, "You're up." <laughs> it's your turn. But again, acknowledging it, and I remember thinking, you know. Uh, there was a little piece that's for some, you know, old anxieties coming up, like I'm trapped in a plane. And then I thought, you know, at 10 o'clock, you'll be out of this plane, most likely. So acknowledge that it's annoying right now and just feel it and then let it go. Mm -hmm. Just feel it. Yeah. You know. Just feel it and let it go. And you know what? Same thing happened to me when I was coming here to Kelowna. 20 minute delay, half an hour delay. I get here and we're waiting for the uh, stairs to show up or the gate to get to or whatever it was. It was a gate, same thing, waiting for our gate to open. And we were late. And then Chance and Sunny were at the gate, adorable little Sunny waiting patiently for Nona. And we then there's a look of concern on Chance's face. Like, yeah, we're really late. Yeah. Birthday party starts in like five minutes. And I'm like, 
birthday party? He goes like, yeah, we're going to a birthday Halloween party. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm going to be Rainbow Bimbo Barbie. This is going to be fun, right? Like I'm all ready. Yeah. Yeah. It's a children's party. I didn't realize that until I showed up as Rainbow Bimbo Barbie. <laughs> and all the other parents are dressed in their proper parental attire. And I've got to thank God I had a wrap, a, a shawl wrap to wrap around my boobs that were jumping out at the party. And I'm like, how can I roll with this? I could have blamed Chance for not explicitly explaining this to me. <laughs> but I said I was going to have the most fun at the party, and I did. And the kids know Barbie. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. They had no clue who I was or what I was. The kids just wanted candy. They didn't well, care. And isn't this the story of life? Waiting for gates, waiting for things to happen, you know, mistaken information. And again, how we live through all of these stories is that living with intention, taking care of ourselves, you know, and not necessarily, you know, like you said, I, okay, well, I didn't know. So what can I do? Mm -hmm. Um, these are all stories of the airport, kind of our analogies to life. Sometimes the plane's late. Sometimes there's no gate. Sometimes you're next to the person who takes up more space than they bought their seat for. You know, um, all, of, all of those things. It's, it's such an interesting time to be. I, I love the word interesting these days because it's very neutral. It's trying to look at judgments. It's interesting. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be bad. You know, I'm letting go of life has to be hard. Life is. How I react to it makes it hard or easy. Life is interesting. Well, that's why I say life is magical. Yeah. Because. I, it is. I, I think that is the sim, the, as similar for all, all of, like both of you. Interesting. Magical. Mm -hmm. Same, same. Yeah. yeah. Same, same. There's no, I don't have a judgment around either of those words. No. Just, no, just no. no. You show up at the party, you're like, well, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. And I've well, usually got that Cheshire shit eating grin on my face because I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be real good. <laughs> and I'm the character. I'm the, I'm the character that gets to decide how I behave. Not anybody else. Well, and what you wrote there is perfect. We are either in an energy of expansion, stagnation, or regression. And, um, you know, the expression, don't look back, I'm not going that way, <laughs> you know. Uh, right. And I still have reactions. It does help to live an intentional life because even when I have that reaction that's a regression, it's like, ah. What's that old pattern? I don't even use the word trigger anymore. I use the word activate that activated me that I chose that old pattern mm -hmm. or I chose stagnation or I chose expansion. That's why I like the word activate because it's not a trigger for me. It's not something that pulls on me. It's just something that activates me to go again, oh. neutralizing the end, the, language with intention so since it's activating me i have choices oh i picked a regression kind of choice <laughs> something i used to do or used to look at and why did i go there and there's that let me take care of myself because that isn't a pattern i like to redo and sometimes i just I, I, my friend and I have a running joke about, and sometimes I take my umbrella and a flashlight and a friend and I jump down that well anyway, <laughs> you know, but I take tools with me now as where before I used to be in the well yelling, get me out of here, you know, or who pushed me down that well? Who can I blame for this? You know, yeah. I'm going to take my flashlight, my umbrella, like Mary Poppins out. And a lot of times it's because I take a friend with me and say, hmm, not happy with my reaction. Can I, let's, would you listen while I go through it? And, and that's um, holding space. Yeah. So Miss Kitty, what course, because you have so much wisdom 
and 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 I'm so honored to have you as one of my dear friends. Can I ask you to share with everybody that's watching the things that you're doing and the different courses you have going on? How can people tap into what you do? Um, well, I read charts. I'm actually starting to specialize in relationship charts, but not so much. Mainly children and parents. Uh -huh children, grandparents. I just think if we can learn about each other's maps, um, they're called synastry charts, that that would help us, especially when you're a, a parent, because it's very interesting when you start with your children when they're younger, uh, the conversations in the charts are about your chart. As they go through their teenage years into their 20s, it becomes a little more about theirs. Once they hit their second, their Saturn return, it becomes kind of an even playing field. And then as we age and we start in our new restructuring Saturn return, it becomes about the conversation takes place in their chart. So just knowing that what house, what it's about is really interesting. Um, I teach a course called Optimize. My dear friend Nancy's in it, um, which is just, it's just teaching you to look at your chart as a map. And not to become an astrologist, though, if that's what you want to do, you can, you know, do you do you. Um, but it's to really look at the energy bargains and things that you kind of entered into when you came um, to this planet. There were definitely things we signed up to learn. Mm -hmm. We just did. And we have different tools in our stories, different parts of our play, which is why I call myself the storytelling astrologist. Um, different parts of our play, soliloquies, uh, group, you know, mm -hmm. that learning about them can help us navigate the journey. Um, I am a Virgo North Node, and so is Joseph Campbell. So I truly understand the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. um, this to how how do you tell the, the how are you the star, the hero in your own story? the hero of your own stories because every single day you have that opportunity. So that course is called Optimize. And then I have um, what's Intuition of the Soul, which is just a free platform for anyone who's in a spiritual journey to meet different people. That's why I post your things, um, Nancy's things, every everybody who I fall in love with, I post their stuff. Um, and it's just an open space for that's safe for people to explore um, and that's just kind of the, the give, I started with, it's a give back. It's a, just a, a safe space to do all of that. Um, and so, and you can always contact me, um, via intuition of the souls. Matter of fact, my, the Gmail I use is intuition of the soul 11 at gmail.com only because really intuition of the soul was not available when I signed up at with for a, a Gmail. Um, so I'm like, Hmm, I kind of want to send it to the old intuition of the soul and say, Hey, who are you? <laughs> so, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. It'll be a fun experiment, I think. Yeah. It, it, it may be a non-existent thing, but yeah, even as I'm saying it, I'm like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to send, Hey, intuition of the soul. This is intuition of the soul 11 at gmail.com. Who are you? <laughs> you know, risk it for the biscuit. Yeah. They might so. become a good partner somehow. Risk it for the biscuit. Just put it out there. Right. See what's going to happen. I did a beautiful reading for a young lady this afternoon. And um, the final card that came down was absolutely perfect and divine for her. And it was a matter of making choices. That's what she was asking about, some choices in her life. And I said to her, I said, so how will you feel if one year from now you change nothing? That's it. How will you feel one year from now if you change nothing? Will you feel resentful? Will you wish that you had done something? It's up I to you. Question. I do. And if you change nothing, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. And as a Scorpio, I can't even imagine a year where you wouldn't change something, you know. And that's that's kind of the fun doing your natal chart, just to give you it's not about understanding all of it, but just to understand kind of the conversations that you had coming into this uh, 
What were, what were my agreements? What did I think I was going to take a look at? Unless you just believe everything in the, everything is random, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I think, I don't think it's a predestined plan and there's another word I stopped using, but, and, and, um, I believe that we have some agreement, some goals and how we accomplish them is expansion, stagnation, or regression. One of the three is one of the methods to. Well, and it's all about choices too, because with every choice, something can change as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That goes like with Nancy, you know, what Nancy was talking to the lady about. She has the choice to change something in her life. Right. And, and, you know, it's so funny. What's the worst that could happen? I go, I won't do that again. <laughs> I mean, that's often what it comes down to, you know. And even in the most content times of our lives, we still want to expand because you, even if you're having the most amazing meal, do you want that same meal every day for the rest of your life? I mean, steak and lobster every day, eventually you'd be like, no more, no more. Right. You know, and that is part of this human expansion is to understand that serenity and those things are still dynamic. We don't arrive um, at, otherwise it would be bored, which is why we create drama. Only how can I create that energy in change and expansion and um, support rather than uh, that's how, why people I think get addicted to drama. You know, they get into everybody else's life because they're, it, I, again, my own life is barely my business. I don't have time for other people's lives. There's just so much in my own world that I can be, like you said, take a risk. It, do you want to stay the same for a whole year? Nope. That's where, and that's where anxiety and things come from is me trying to control. No, oh, micromanage the universe. Yeah. Yeah. I gave that up. Yeah. Thank God that I'm not in charge. <laughs> Thank you source. Because yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. So. so much. Yeah. So, so much. And, and when we start realizing that it's, the plot twists in life. Because mm -hmm. when you're watching a TV series or a movie, uh, TV series is easier to under explain for me. So when you're watching a TV series, at the end of the episode, something happens. Mm -hmm. And you tune in the next episode to see, mm -hmm. did Beth push him over the cliff? <laughs> Take him to the train station. <laughs> train station. Yeah. What happened? Oh my God, everybody blew up. Who's alive? Mm -hmm. That's going to happen. Next. And if you realize that's what happens in your life, you know, like you go to get on the plane, you're like, oh, well, looks like that was canceled. Now what? Right. Am and I it's at the airport all night or. Right. And, it is, it is your reaction to it. You can, yeah. you, you know, that's one reason I like hanging out with Daphne is her approach is, oh, this is cool. She enjoys the joy mm -hmm. as things happen. So the drama lessens. I, yeah, I'm not going to pay a lot of attention to this. Let me see what else I can do. Uh, all of it has understanding and excitement. I don't need the other stuff anymore. Thank you for your lessons from it. Mm -hmm. You know, just, I loved your story about the airport. It was excitement. It was an adventure. Oh, isn't this cool? It worked out versus stomping around going, oh, they should have, you know, uh, yeah. wasn't it cool? We finally got in that gate, The you know, uh, and it's road like, trips with Daphne are great. We've got a uh, workshop coming up out in Lamont and it's about, about 45 minutes. From about an hour from your it's an hour from your place yeah it's yeah, so an hour commute so mm -hmm. get your van get four or five friends load it up hire a limo come on out <laughs> whatever it is that you want to do but create an experience i think that that's one of the things that the lockdown did 
was it brought us back into a place where we aren't adventuring as much. Go for it. What's going to happen? Well, and, it, and it slowed us down to pick the adventures. Yeah. Sometimes it was like, bing, 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 bing. And, you know, I this is not a criticism of parents um, because I know people sign up their children to keep them interested. But sometimes if you spend hours running, mm -hmm. you know, who's, whose need is that? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, when you have a child with a true passion, like, you know, God love hockey parents in the United States, ice time is 6 a.m. or 10 at night. You know? Oh, hey, in Canada? It, it, it expand that because Canadians and hockey parents do think wow yeah I, I didn't have one son in in hockey four sons and I was blessed not to have one in hockey I'm so grateful um you know I my sis one sister not this one I met you know they they and they still play hockey my sister and my brother-in-law play hockey but the ice times that were available for the youth leagues were like and, uh, you know, but they actually had a, a passion for it. And, and she did say to him, this is it. If we're doing hockey, you know, uh, again, I think we got so that what the lockdown showed us was live with intention, figure out where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And now that we start to go out again, all of a sudden I'm traveling again and I'm enjoying it, but it's very purposeful. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, I'm in, uh, may, invited to go to something and I'm thinking, no, it's really not on my list of things I think I'm going to do. The, but there would have been a time like, oh, could I fit it in? No, it's not my intentional living anymore. Or what would they think if I don't go? Will everybody mm -hmm. be upset and mad? Yeah. Right. And again, my own life is barely my business. So. Yeah. You know, yeah. if, if, if that bothers you, you know, I have compassion for that you're disappointed. And I've learned not to say sorry as much. Mm -hmm. I, have, I truly say I have compassion for that. I, I, I understand I have compassion that you may be feeling that. Then I don't own it. Because when I say I'm sorry, I used to teach this to school children. I would say if you're going to say you're sorry, it means you're promising to do something else different. And all of a sudden, I'm like, then why am I running around saying, oh, sorry? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm not promising to do anything different. I didn't have anything to do with this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so even when, when people pass away, I'll say, I have a lot of compassion. I'm sending you a hug, blessings, anything. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's not that I have compassion that you lost someone. I'm, you know, and obviously, but again, the word for me, sorry, is is to say I can do something and it helps me acknowledge this is not in my wheelhouse to do something. I have a lot of compassion and I have empathy for how sad this is. And I feel that. So it's just, a, it's again, it's that intentional hmm, words I'm using. What other agreements do I have behind those words? Oh, I, I, I've got nothing to change in me. I just, it's truly compassion that you've lost someone. So very much. So very much. So compassion, very different, very different than sorrow. Yes. Very different. Yeah. Very, very different. And often a lot of our sorrow at loss is about our own loss. Anyway, it's our memories. Mm -hmm. That's a piece of it. So yeah. the unhealed, parts of ourselves so this last question you put up nancy how do you know mm -hmm. when you need to spend more time caring for yourself the universe has a really really good way of showing me you know and if i don't listen the universe makes it the messages louder and louder and louder like years ago i was at work and i was sick and i wouldn't take time off like this is years ago right and I thought, okay, great. I'm going to stay home tomorrow. That means I can get this and this and this and this and this and this done. Awesome. Okay. So that's what I did. I stayed home and I got all those things done. And then I was on my way to go pick up Colton from daycare because he was still a little at the time. And 
a school bus ran a yellow light and I clipped the back end of a school bus and I jumped out of my Jeep and I went, really? Okay, I will listen. So for me, how do I know when I need to spend more time caring for myself? I intentionally listen better. I intentionally, if I'm not feeling well, I know that I need to slow down and care for myself. That's my answer. <laughs> yeah. My answer is when I don't know what to do next, when I'm amassed in my thoughts mm -hmm. and things, uh, I have all these feelings of whether it's lack of confidence or something, usually that yeah. means I have not spent enough time intentionally living. I have lost or, or I've dismissed my own thought, just what you're saying. I, I didn't listen. I've dismissed my own thought pattern. And even though louder things, so I have more emotions that come up and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This is about me pausing and just letting this, you know, time to do something for myself. What will that look like? You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's for me to be quiet. Peace is a beautiful place to be. It's yeah. an absolutely beautiful place. I love how I am living my life lately with the two sides of me, the me who is present and the me who is observing me present. So I'm watching myself much more. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Ooh, you're hangry. I am not. Oh no, you really are. Like you should have an app. I'm not tired. Right. And all of a sudden I start acting like I'm too. <laughs> having a little mini meltdown, a temper tantrum. Like, don't tell me what to do. I'm an adult. I'm like, oh, something's up your ass, right? And then I'm like, okay, fine. I guess maybe I could. Oh, a nap would sure feel nice. Or I haven't eaten yet this morning. It's 10 yeah. o'clock in the morning. I've been up since 5 a.m. and I haven't eaten. Oops, that's okay. Now I can have something to eat. Mm -hmm. Being present with myself. Be present. And I think, you know, to answer the question, spend more time, is put it in your day. Mm -hmm. You know, there are things you, to do just for yourself to remember to do. You know, and don't make them a chore because I've done that too. Oh, this will help me. And then it becomes a chore. That's not helping me. No. You know, if I don't feel good about doing it for myself. So like I started to do the daily astrological reels yeah. and they didn't become a chore. I'm like, ah, this is what that feels like. Certain other things become a chore, you know? And uh, like when I used to try to, you know, every single day be on the treadmill for X amount of time, it was a chore. It wasn't motivating. It wasn't living with an intention, you know. So that was not, it was much better for me to go out for a walk every day. And that's something that I do with my friend Chantel and her two dogs. We do a kilometer walk every morning. And it doesn't feel like, a, you know, it's, that's just what we do. I mean, the times change depending on day, but that's something that we do for each other. She's my account walk accountability partner, you know, for my health. And it's fun to visit and get out in the fresh air and yeah. walk and, you know. Yeah. Very And much. I'm not coming because I don't do <laughs> I'm looking forward to going to yoga when I get back. I really, truly am. And I know that Daphne's not coming. Daphne Happen doesn't alone. do yoga. We tried that once together. Oh, my God. I felt so bad. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. She's like, I, I told, I told her I don't do yoga. <laughs> She's like, I don't do yoga. I'm like, oh, come on. Anybody can do yoga. And then I'm looking at Daphne. I'm like, oh, you hate this. <laughs> it's like swimming. I don't do swimming either. And I love swimming. That's my next best thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like swimming, get a cat. Not no. I like I like Qigong. That's, I like that more. That's much gentler, easier for me to follow, you know, yeah. So. So interesting. It is. It's very interesting. But that's what living with intention, what self-care, there's the first word. It's caring of self. So you have to know yourself to do it. Yeah. 
But you also, well, but also, it's good to experience things. Oh yeah, to know that you don't want to do them. Well, and how could you know yourself unless you tried it? You know, it's like saying to your kids, take one bite. Before you say you don't like it, take one bite. Yeah. Now, the fact you go like this, <laughs> okay, you don't like it, okay. You know? <laughs> That's when the hand comes out as they're spitting it into oh, yeah. your hand. <laughs> well, I used to tell the kids, just take a no thank you bite. Then mm. you've, you've tasted it, take a no thank you bite. Yeah. So, so that you can say, no, thank you. I, I, it's not a favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you don't have to say I don't like it. It's just not a favorite. You know, I feel that way about beets. I think they taste like dirt, personally. <laughs> so, well, like, they grow in the dirt, so. You know, they're, and my friends will say they have an earthy flavor. Okay, it's dirt. <laughs> so, so, but I've taken my no thank you bites. So I know, <laughs> like, no, thank you. No, no thank you. No, That's thank awesome. you. You know, and you do you. It's, And I do know people have different taste buds. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. why would we all like the same things? Just More like beets for me. Food. Yeah. More oh. beets for me. I will you think of always, you when I eat my beets. You can always have my beets, honey. <laughs> my beets and my lima beans. You can have them both. No, no lima beans. <laughs> That's Definitely. Good. No. Nope. Yeah. So there's no thank you food we all agree on. No thank you. No lima beans. Yeah. Now fava beans. Although that's a whole different conversation. Although lima beans and Doug's chili can get away with those. But fava beans and a good glass of Chianti. Ooh, thank you, Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Should we all make our <laughs> Sorry, Maurice. <laughs> you oh know, my gosh, it is Halloween. And I've never, you know what? I've actually never seen that movie, but I know enough about it and that scene. That yeah, I've not probably watched that movie twenty times because oh. at one time I really enjoyed studying the mind of a madman, and then I married one. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you created in your world. Just saying. Yeah, that's right. I'm, right. right. I, that is not my genre, I guess, because I can see things and I've uh, lived through some of the horror is not my genre at all. Mm -mm. Yeah. Why do I think it's fun to be scared by things I know exist? No, thanks. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. That was like, we've got this big thing here in Edmonton. It's called Scream. It's like a big haunted house. Okay. So anyways, my mom, my brother, because my mom's birthday is October 18th. He's like, let's take mom to Scream for her birthday. I'm like, no hard no he's like come on you know it, it's no i don't need to be scared thanks i i'm not paying somebody to scare me yeah not that's my deal that's not my deal either i'm not paying you to sit there and, and this is how i watch it yeah i mean with my fingers and my ears and my hands over my eyes why would i pay money for that you know yeah and that's the ultimate self-care yeah right no. No, the, the intentional living, choosing what makes you the happiest. Right. So that yeah. you can live in a place of joy, exponential joy. Yeah. You know, and pe people could say when I was growing up, oh, you, that's a loser. Yep. Me. <laughs> that's what makes me a loser. Uh, I'm okay with that one. You yeah. Know, not my, not my circus, not my monkeys, man. Not, you know, and I, I, if that's what you love, great. Yeah, have fun. Just you do you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um yeah. You got it. Yeah. Mic drop and thank you, ladies. That <laughs> you. was absolutely divine and perfect in every way, especially the lighting. This is really cool. I've kind of got this woo thing. Going. He's got the Halloween-esque effect going, you know. <laughs> Something like that. Either that or Something she's in her like well that. and she's got her flashlight. So <laughs> waiting she for have her umbrella though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, such fun. Thanks, ladies. Until next week. Keep on living joyfully. Good night. Good night.